Well, good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the new student panel. Um, we are hosting this so that you can get all of your questions answered from fellow students. Um, we're getting ready to start the semester 14 week courses on August 23rd, which is next Monday. Um, I can't believe August has gone so fast. My name is Sarah Pengel. I am an academic advisor at the Middletown campus, and I will be moderating our session this evening. So I will be going around and asking our students questions um, that we have sort of pre-written pre uh, for you all. And then at the end, we will open it up for a Q&A session um, so that you can get any, any other burning questions you may have out before that. Um, I also have, Caroline Wood here. She is the vice president of, what are you vice president of now? You're well, first you just gave me a promotion. I did. Woo! <laughs> 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 Woo! Uh, I'm associate vice president of student services and academic support. So all of those great services like advising and student engagement, the library, the student, you know, stuff like that. So I have been invited to talk about the fun, fun topic of COVID. What's going to happen this fall with COVID? And as you know, it's been um, an extremely fluid situation. And first, we would say that we are here to prevent the spread of COVID. And the first defense against that is the vaccine. So if you haven't gotten your vaccine, we certainly highly encourage you to get your vaccine. But because of the Delta variant and its spread and all of our regions within the Lord Fairfax uh, district are in uh, high transmission, we are um, requiring masks indoors at all of our sites and all of our campuses. That means if you are attending class, going to the library, going to the restroom, going to see an advisor, you will be required to have a mask on at all times. So there are a couple places where you can find out information. Uh, when you go onto the website, there's a banner that, that says that. Also in Canvas, there's an update and it, it says COVID-19 updates. It will pop up every time there's a new update and we date all of our updates. So you'll know when new information comes up for you in case there's a change in protocol. Uh, some of the things you might um, anticipate this fall uh, are, you know, you may find that people come in and out of your class because they might have been diagnosed with COVID. Um, you might have a class that goes on to Zoom for a week or two. We don't know what exactly to anticipate for the fall, but one of the things we need you to know that is if you have symptoms, if you're not feeling well, please do stay home. Let your faculty member know. Um, even if you've had a vaccine and you don't feel good, stay home. Um, if you are unvaccinated if you want to get a test. Um, and we're asking all folks to report cases of COVID because we do have to report those. It's uh, COVID at lfcc.edu. So you can report it there. Let your, you can let your faculty member know as well. We're asking faculty to let us know too. So what will happen is if you do have um, a positive diagnosis of COVID uh, and you report it to COVID at LFCC, we're gonna respond immediately back with some questions because there are different scenarios for uh, different vaccination statuses, whether you're positive, showing symptoms, uh, things like that. So there's no cookie cutter answer for what we're going to be asking people to do as far as isolating or quarantining. It really is dependent on the scenario. So what we are saying is that we can all do this together. We all have to participate by wearing our masks, reporting cases, and if we, you know, if you can get the vaccine. So those are the three things that you can do to help your community stay safe this fall. Does anybody have any questions? I know that um, people have different levels of anxiety uh, around COVID um, and exposure to it. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I am happy to take them. And if you wanna remain anonymous, you can drop a direct message in our chat feature. If you're not familiar with Zoom, um, at the bottom of your screen, there should be an option to choose chat. 
and you can choose the drop down box to send a message either to myself or to Chris Lambert. Um, and we will make sure that we ask that question for you so you can stay anonymous if you'd like to do that. And even if you don't do that tonight, if you have questions, follow up questions, you can always email COVID. I don't know who checks it, or you can email me at cwood at lfcc.edu. So um, those are those are two emails you can use just to ask questions uh, about, you know, what if I'm this or that, or somebody in my house, you know, has COVID. And so if you have questions about, you know, whether you've been exposed, we're happy to work through the scenario with you. Uh, the CDC guidelines are pretty dense in terms of trying to figure out like a lot of information, figure out what exactly to do. So we're happy, happy to just sit down and work through it with you. Okay, I was just trying to give my introverts a chance to <laughs> ask some questions. Chris, do you have anything in in your messages? No messages, but uh, I will monitor them and I will ask on anyone's behalf. I'm happy to do that. All right, awesome. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Caroline. And she, are you going to stay around or are you? Absolutely. All right. So she'll be sticking around in case you do think of something uh, that you want to ask her. Uh, but right now we are going to turn it over to our students. Um, we're going to have them kind of introduce themselves with their name, their degree, and um, answering the question, why did you choose LFCC? So since Jeff, you were at the very top corner of my screen, I'm going to let you go first. I knew Chris shouldn't have put me up here first. So I'm Jeff Savoy and uh, I'm on the outdoor leadership, recreation, outdoor recreation leadership and supervision track. Um, I've gotten my education certificate for that, but I'm staying to finish my associate's degree. Um, I was a park ranger and I worked in the maintenance department. And as you can tell, I'm getting a little old for being a maintenance ranger and I hope to work my way into management or interpretation. And one of the rangers that I worked with had gone through the program at LFCC and highly recommended it. And so that's how I ended up at LFCC. Awesome, thank you so much for being here with us this evening uh, to answer our questions. The um, next person I'm going to introduce since my screens start are jumping everywhere, um, is Mary. And Mary, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you chose LFCC? Hey guys, good evening. My name is Mary Hess. I am a human services major. I, my major ties into why I came to LFCC. I was looking at programs in the Northern Virginia area and NOVA has a program and counseling as well, which is what I am going for. But I just had a feeling that I was going to be a number at NOVA. I felt even trying to navigate their website or get help felt super overwhelming coming back to school as an adult. And I did not have that experience at LFCC. Everybody was willing to help me. I had not taken online classes ever. This was a big learning curve for me and LFCC has been absolutely every step of the way with me, which is exactly what I needed and really appreciate. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, we have lost Wanye, so we'll wait to see if he comes back. Um, but the next person I'm going to um, ask to introduce themselves is Marta. Hello, uh, my name is Marta Pacheco, and I have two degrees, one in Associates of Science for Health Profession Specialization. And my other one is Associates in Arts and Science for my general studies. And the reason why I came to LSTC was originally I was going to be a botanist. And due to this was because my neighbor had suggested that LSTC had a horticultural degree at their time. <laughs> so I came to learn eventually when I went to enroll in, you know, give my documents and everything that they didn't have that anymore. So I had to process everything and just kind of went with the ride with um, what my advisor had suggested that she had asked me a couple questions. What was I into and specifically was in science and helping people. And she had suggested that 
the medical field would probably work for me. And after that, I basically got nervous since I was 26 at that time. And, you know, going to school, your subjects just kind of are in the closet and you just don't know what. And so, but I soon learned that LCC has terrific teachers. And once I got into my subject, I soon learned to love science again. And LCC made that possible. Awesome, thank you for being here tonight. So the next question kind of elaborates more on what we just spoke about. And not all of the students are gonna be responding to every question because we'd be here all evening. So um, we've kind of decided who's sort of going to talk about different things uh, for each question. So the next question is, how would you describe your experience at LFCC? So Mary? Hey, thanks Sarah for that question. My experience at LFCC has been completely online. And again, like I said, it was intimidating for me to come back to school in the first place, being online. It first kind of felt out of my depth, but every professor I've had, every time I've called school, everybody has been wonderful and great and really helped me develop as a student, as a coming back to school, I feel really positive and really encouraged and just want to be an encouragement to those around me, especially on this panel. Any questions, you know, feel free to ask. And then I'll Ooh. kick that question to Marta. Um, well, for me, I originally, during that time, it was like 2019. So I got to experience kind of like that college life. And um, the experience that I gather from that is basically make sure that if you're taking any science class to have your lecture in your lab to basically be the same professors. Because if you don't, you have two different professors, you are going to be lost because one is gonna teach you a different portion of what you're learning of your subject while the other is going off at a different speed. And you kind of need to be in a very synchronized type of environment if you're learning if you're going into the medical field especially for me that I had AP um I had to basically learn relearn everything in my lab since that one's basically you're learning about the anatomy like the body parts muscle parts you just it's basically more about memorization while lecture it's going to teach you how the body functions based on the chemical reactions of the oxygen or whatever and so you need to, if you're going into the science field, you need to make sure that your labs and your lecture to be kind of synchronized with the same professors. Um, and you also get to learn a lot of stuff in lab. You don't, it's not based on memorization, but you get to do stuff such as microbiology. You get to stay in a live bacteria. And they also, um, once we got into COVID where it was more online based, um, the teachers, they, it depends on what um, subject you're going for. Microbiology, I got to experience that in lab from last semester, two semesters ago. And other classes, you're gonna have like an online based lab, which is pretty easy, but it's just a little bit tedious, but it's overall, you get to learn how your subject functions at a lab portion. And basically um, the last thing I wanna tell you guys is to make sure that you read your syllabus it's not the same as the high school syllabus, which is going to talk about your teacher and just kind of a boring portion of it. At a college level, you, your syllabus is gonna give you the information of your, your professor's contact, um, phone, cell phone, sometimes that we put up there, their emails, their Zoom IDs, everything. And then they're gonna have like a calendar basically of what you're going to learn. And sometimes it's gonna, it's gonna list your tests and your quizzes. And sometimes your professor, your professor is human. So remember that they make mistakes as well. Um, so if they have like a test that kind of do early than what your syllabus is stating, and you are more prepared from what your syllabus is going from, you could always reach out to your professors and say, hey, I'm not gonna be ready by this time, please based on your syllabus, you had it on this day and they will make sure that they will understand like, oh yes, I wrote it on the syllabus and it's my mistake, I apologize. And they'll fix everything. And the reason why I'm talking about the syllabus is because 
students that are quiet, I know I was quiet at the time, I didn't reach out to my professors. So I tended to be, I followed what they went on their own agenda when I could have gone what the syllabus was telling me and it would have made my life easier. And also to reach out to your professors because they are wanting there to basically help you succeed with your whatever degree that you're going for and just to create a bond with them because when you need that um, recommendation letter from them for to go to school or for a job interview or whatever, they're willing to give you that letter of recommendation and they will talk very highly of you just to succeed for whatever you're going for. So that's the only thing that I would recommend. Great answer. Thank you so much for that. Um, I will say as an instructor that I make mistakes. And sometimes when I see students in my office here um, struggling with something and they're like, you know, it says it was supposed to be this and it's showing up as this, please reach out to your instructor. It's okay to ask questions and it's okay to say, you know, hey, you know, I'm not seeing whatever you said was supposed to be posted or um, this didn't show up for me and send screenshots or let them know. And a lot of times I'll be like, oh, my bad. And I'll go and, and publish it for you. So please, you know, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to them in a gentle, kind way, obviously, <laughs> and let them know that something isn't showing up correctly for you. Okay. Um, the next question that we have is, what opportunities does LFCC give students to get involved and be engaged? And we've got Marta up first for that one. Um, so there is a lot that LFCC offers for students, such as the SCV class that you're gonna be taking. Um, it's gonna basically talk about the school, the teacher, and then um, teaches you how to write a proper email teaches you how to write a great resume, allows mock trials such as interviews and just overall gives you a good feedback um, to basically be out in the real world if you haven't gotten any job experience. Um, you can also learn about your EQ, your IQ. You can learn about all the jobs that your degree offers for you. There is always an opportunity for volunteering, especially in SCV classes. Um, especially for the one that I had, we got to plant flowers around the campus and we got to volunteer at a museum in Winchester. Um, but as your SCV class is not the only place that you'll learn about volunteering opportunities. There is clubs such as the Sim Club, the Book Reading Club, English Club. There is also a food pantry that the school offers for students just to get food if you <laughs> miss your breakfast or if you need some if you don't have money enough to get for like dinner or lunch or whatever, they have food for you, resources basically on that. Um, then there is also the workforce that offers CNA classes. You know, basically that one is more of a different subject because it goes into more of the electrical, the more career based where instead of going to school, how you're gonna get your degree by taking psychology, that one is basically gonna put you in classes that will go immediately into your career once you're done with it. And it's a short semester as well. Okay, and then we, uh, we're we gonna have Wanye kind of talk about our student ambassador program. Um, Mary, do you wanna talk about that a little bit or do you want me to fill that in? Uh, sure, I, I can talk about it. I think that, um, as a student who's, you know, this whole past year, 18 months, whatever it's been, coming back to school at this time, I really wanted to be involved on campus. I didn't really know what that looked like, but just for new students, students coming back, kind of also what Mark was saying, just to dovetail on that, I just perused the website. I tried to email people to figure out how I could get involved on campus with people coming back. I wanted to be part of the face at LFCC since I've had such an outstanding experience. And one of the ways that I am able to do that is through the student ambassador program, uh, which I, I think I found out this summer when I participated in the survivor series, I found out what the student ambassador program was and I am thrilled to be a part of it. I'm from the Middletown location. That's probably where I'll be involved most. As a student ambassador, you are involved on campus. You're involved 
we have next week a couple of activities coming for new students being on campus to help distribute backpacks and just be there for questions and information people might have. There's also events throughout the year to volunteer for. Um, I know that there's some community outreach as well. It's basically being the face of LFCC in our community on campus and share your experiences, which I've really enjoyed doing. I'm a talker, as I'm sure everybody around me will attest to, but I just cannot say enough positive things, and I want people to feel confident to be a student at LFCC, and I want to be a resource that students or anybody can come and ask me questions, and that's part of the role as well of being a student ambassador. So I'm looking forward to serving this year and I definitely hope that you will consider uh, and get involved, ask to get involved. Great. So I put the link into the chat so that everybody can see if you'd like to be get involved with the student ambassador program. There is an application that goes in, but um, it's not like a super rigorous uh, process that we go through. We We'll sit down and meet with you and learn about what your goals are and and tell you a little bit more about the program and, and where we're going and some things that we have coming up. You only have to have 20 hours for the entire semester in order to be an ambassador. So it's supposed to be flexible to meet, you know, because we know that you're students as well. So it looks really good on a resume. It's great for career building, networking and all those things, too. Okay, so on to the next question. Um, what student support programs and resources are available to students? Um, we'll kick that one to Jeff. So, and, and Mary kind of touched on this. Um, at LFC, LFCC, the amount of support we get is, is immense. Um, there's so many places that we can turn to. Um, You'll have your student advisor, your regular student advisors. Um, we also have the TRIO program, um, which is a little bit more in-depth advising. Um, and, and there's quite a bit more extra support there. Um, so it can be in the form of grants. Um, it can also just be in the, they, they have the TRIO lounge where they have computer access and the food pantry that Martha uh, talked about and, 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 and that. And then there's also, you know, there's Wi-Fi on campus in all the buildings and in the parking lot. Um, there are study spaces that we can use as late as 10 p.m., um, which has been really helpful for me. Um, and then, then uh, again, uh, you know, like has been said so many times, your professors are really behind making sure that you make it through your program, you know. Awesome. And I do want to add about the TRIO program. So the TRIO program is a support system for students. And when I, when I present orientation and I talk about TRIO, I like to talk about the fact that when I was a student, I was a first generation college student, which meant that both of my parents did not get a bachelor's degree. So they were really supportive, which I was very blessed to have, uh, but they didn't know how to navigate college. And so I would have problems and issues and didn't know who to go to, didn't know who to ask. And so I would just kind of ping pong around. The TRIO program is supposed to help prevent that from happening. And they're your go-to person. Um, you do have to apply to be in TRIO, but they help you say, you know, you sit down and you say, I'm having this issue or where do I go for this? And they say, this is the form you fill out. This is the office you go to. This is how you get this completed here. Let's sit down and talk about this. Um, and TRIO serves three different kinds of students. So they work with first generation college students, which would have been me. Um, they work with students with disabilities and low income students. So it doesn't hurt to just go in and submit an application and see if you can apply, um, get into TRIO. So for the rest of that question, I'm going to kick that over to Marta about our student support programs and resources. Um, some of the support systems that LSCC offers um, that I took advantage of was the library. Um, the library has laptops that they will loan it for you and webcams 
especially when you're going to be doing taking online classes that require Zoom, um, you know, and such as like Respondus, which is basically a testing thing that kind of watches you not to teach. I mean, cheat. <laughs> Um, and basically, if you're not comfortable with that on your own laptop, um, you could go and borrow one from the library and they will gladly loan you one, you know. And then they also have um, a 24 hour librarian when you go onto the library site and you do your research paper. I've taken some in, like advantage of that. Like even you'd be seeing me writing my research paper and I'd be on there with a 24 hour librarian. And these people are, like all over the country um, and they basically help you on the subject that you're writing. Like I'd be three or four o'clock in the morning and I'd be like, hey, I need this book. I need this research topic about, and they'd be like, gladly, I'll point you the way. And they'll go into other schools own library database and they'll get that paper for you because if your library doesn't have it, then they'll go out to another one specifically just to give you that document to write about. Um, they also offer a free, um, a research opportunity, how to write a research paper at our school at the um, middle school campus. Um, and that one is appointment based only. I haven't touched that, but I know they specifically have that. If you have trouble writing a paper and you don't know how to write it, because you know writing an English paper to a science paper are both different things and they require different citations. And you're gonna most likely, you're gonna get your most help from a librarian who's more experienced with that um, than anybody, honestly. Um, and that's one of the opportunities that, you know, LCC offers. Great, and we also have tutors. Um, you can go to into your Navigate and just like setting up an appointment with your advisor, you can select tutoring and set up appointments with our tutors that we host here. Um, well, that we host through LFCC. And then there's also, um, BrainFuse, which is a 24 seven tutoring software that you should have a tile to in your uh, my LFCC. So if you're up late working on something or you're working on a subject that we don't have a tutor for, you can go into BrainFuse and get support that way. The next question that we have is, what does it look like for a non-traditional student, non-traditional or adult student? And we'll kick that to Mary. You are muted. There hey. you go. Okay, sorry. Um, for me, the experience. Mary, you've got a lag. Mary, you've got a really bad lag right now. Can you hear me? Uh, it's trying to catch still okay. not great. Do you hear? Do you hear me now? Yes, you're good. You can do it now. <laughs> Try again. Great. Okay, it just froze again. <laughs> I see you, Chris, in your laughing face. <laughs> so Mary, why don't we give you a second and then I will kick this to Jeff first and hopefully we could get you in. There's storms all around. Uh, so hang on just a second. We'll, we'll let Jeff answer first. She's still trying. Go ahead, I muted her. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so as an as a returning adult student, um, and you know, and in so many ways, again, that there's so much support for us at LFCC, um, you know, career services and and you know, like coming into this, I, you know, I, I didn't have a resume and, and one of my professors has taken the time to sit down with me and work one out. And, and so, 
there are a lot of things like that. And, and the same for, you know, what we would consider non-traditional students. They, they work with us as who we are to really make us make things work as, as best they can. Um, I know that Vivi, uh, Vivi Matters, she does all the accommodations and, and they're, they're, they're so good about making sure that we all have the tools we need to, to continue. All right, Mary. <laughs> Want to try again? Let's try this again, friends. Um, the question was, what does it look like for a non-traditional student, adult student? For me, coming back to school after 20 years, I, I can't express the intimidation. I just was so nervous, but I knew this is something that I wanted to do for me. And with COVID, a job fell through and everything just kind of came together. I knew my experience was going to be different than when I was 19. And it certainly has been because my head is in the game. I have been nothing but right up in the professor's emails, trying to connect with them. My grades and time spent in these courses it's a very different experience as an adult. And there's definitely been some learning curves, but again, I think we've all said it, the support I've received from my professors has been extraordinary. If something has glitched, if there's a recording that hasn't worked, or even if one of my children uh, you know, was up all night and I wasn't able to complete something, I have had, I establish, I want to establish a relationship, even online with my professors. I wanna have that rapport with them I want them to know that I'm serious and that I'm here to succeed. And I have been given so many opportunities having the relationship with my professors online, you know, again, through Zoom calls, emails, whatever. But everybody has been so supportive of me as an adult. Everybody has been like, wow, that's great. I'm so glad you made the choice to come back to school. I've just felt so encouraged. I mean, encouraged enough that I did want to be a student ambassador. I did want to find out how I can get involved in campus because the time is now. The time is now to go back to school. And at LFCC, everything has been in a way that I have succeeded and I feel successful. That's what it looks like for this adult to go back to school. Yeah, and, and I can elaborate on that a little bit. You know, we talk about how much support that we have, but all of us as students, we are our own best advocates. And, and you kind of need to grab the reins when you need to and, and steer your education where you want it to go. Yes, making those- That's a great point, definitely. But again, and I think, Jeff, like you said, you are your best advocate. And every professor I've had, and this will be my third, going into fall, I think will be my third semester. Everybody has been, you know, email me, text me. Marta, even like you said, emails. It, it, they all, most of them work other jobs, but they really, I have felt like being a student, they're putting all into me. And I've, it's, I am my own advocate. I want to be, I want to be known in class because I want to succeed and I want to do well. And I really, I really do feel like being your own advocate. That's great. Oh, having you all talk about this stuff makes me, makes my heart happy. Um, <laughs> because we haven't seen students a whole lot face to face over the last year and a half. And you know, it's really great to see you and have you talk to us. And, you know, so what they're saying is true, like talk to us. Uh, we, we are here for you. Uh, we work really hard to make sure that your experiences are good. So um, it's nice to, to hear that things are going so well for you all. So the next question is, um, how does LFCC ensure that all students are included? And this one will kick back to Mary. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Okay. 
I think this is such a great question. Every, I can't remember what day it is, Chris, don't be mad, but every week there's a Leo Lion weekly email that comes out to let you know what's going on on campus, what student life and activities. It's on Monday. Okay. So on Mondays, this email comes out. And at first, when I was getting back into school, it was kind of like, okay, I don't have time for that right now. I have so many other things going on and trying to get into the swing of things with school. Once I felt confident about that, I really was anticipating those emails on Monday. And my first venture, it was last minute, as most things are with me, uh, but I found out that they were doing a virtual spring break. And it was a different time than my children. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to find out about this. Just who was it offered to? Like, what can I do to get involved? And it was, I emailed Chris, who's on the call now, and just said, hey, listen, I'm a student and I'm interested in doing this program where we would be doing a Zoom call with students in Japan of different ages, of children, adults, uh, teenagers. And it was a big group of LFCC students. And I think some professors, but we were from all, all different ranges of life. So it really was there for everybody, for any student or like I said, professor who wanted to get involved. And y'all that week, every night from, I think it was seven to nine or something because of the time difference in Japan, we were able to do English lessons. We learned a few Japanese phrases it was so rewarding and so much fun. And really, it meant a tremendous amount to me to be doing that with my school. There are so many opportunities like that. Like I said, that email on Mondays to me is just, it's like a gossip magazine. I can't wait till it comes out because it's a way to get involved. And there are all kinds of different ways. That email also encouraged me to do Survivor, LFCC Survivor. Um, this summer, which we met at Middletown a few times and did survivor uh, games and some learned some leadership and met some new friends. I had an absolute ball. My team, again, we were three women, all different walks of life, and we've really become good friends. And that was just a bonus, like totally unexpected out of nowhere. As an adult, I have... Um, I have, I've been intimidated a smidge, a little bit to be like, oh, these are just college kids or, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to run and keep up with everybody at Survivor. None of those things have mattered. Those are my deals. Those are my issues. Campus is fun. These have been really fun events we've done that I've participated online as well as in person. Um, and it really is for everybody. And I can tell you firsthand they've been an absolute blast. I've met friends and I really encourage you to just get involved, step out of your comfort zone, um, do one of the desserts with the Dean or one of the back to school things or attend the bingo night or show up for an online discussion, which have been awesome. There was a really good one we did back in gosh, March, I think, um, talking about diversity and it was just really, really good, really informative. Get involved, check out the email on Monday, and I'm sure you'll see me there in Middletown. <laughs> All right, and then Marta, can you add to that? Wow, I don't know, because Mary took everything off of the table that I was going to talk about, <laughs> specifically like the Japanese thing that um, she mentioned. We did, I had a blast there. I got to learn about the cultural, we even got to experience how Japan looks like during a day, like during COVID lockdown. It was, it was phenomenal actually. Um, but there are other stuff other than just, you know, what you see on the weekly news that, Aleo's weekly news. Um, they, sometimes you don't really see this, but if they will send you emails of what type of events that they had. Cause I was fortunate to um, be on campus during these time when they had the mystery bus, when they had like events such as like riding a um, mechanical bull, when they had um, puppies or animals just for like your mental awareness. Um, they also had global awareness, which I participated, which um, basically you got to taste the 
food from different countries. Um, for me specifically, I brought toodles. Um, um, you had like everything from Japan, from Korea, from even Africa and some other Latin countries. Like it was amazing. They um, obviously make sure and ensures that you are included to and experience many, many things that you're usually would not see at other small community colleges, I believe. Um, specifically, they have opportunities for you to, if you have an idea, like you're, you're inspired by an idea and you want to make that come true, you could talk to your professor or some admin that, and they'll point you to the right direction. Like say for me, I was very advocate about um, mental awareness and we got, and I talked since I'm in the SCA, we got to host an event where we did diamond beating and you know we talked about what we were doing and everything, but they have everything such as, I know Chris makes everything kind of come to alive with Sarah's ideas. <laughs> so we, we have like mental awareness day back in spring where we had this one organization who came to talk to us on Zoom um, about you know how to like, kind of not self-diagnose, but to handle that stress that anxiety, that depression that you have, and that there's always people out there for you. And we also, like Mary stated, that we had that diverse um, inclusion type of talk committee that we have currently, that, you know, if you don't feel that LCC don't <laughs> represent you well, you could go up there and say, hey, what are you going to do about it? And of course, they'll talk to you about it. And there's, and I want to say that the police, um, they're very, as much as you know, what's going on with the world, our school police is pretty good with handling subjects such as like the Blue Lives Matter and whatnot. They'll talk to you about it. Like I was kind of hesitant because I didn't know about it, but once you talk to them and they give you their feedback and they're like, oh, you're just as human as I am, you know? LCC just makes it like a home of community of colors and ages and whatever you want. It just makes your idea come kind of come true in certain aspects. Thank you so much for that. Oh, Chris and I are in our fields right now. Um, <laughs> if you want to get involved, we have a diversity and inclusion committee and there is an application process. If you go to lfcc.edu slash student life, you can look at our student um, ways to be a student leader page and you can go through there. I believe, uh, Mary, you are joining that group, right? Oh, she froze again. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> right. Um, uh, oh, no. I'm a member of um, here in the fall for uh, our meetings, but you can't be for diversity. And in my own case, count myself out and being intimidated and unsure. And what should I do? I want to represent my school. I want to be there. I want to have a voice and I want to be, have a seat at the table and LFCC has definitely given me those opportunities. So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. Okay. So and, on to the next question. And, and, and even if you don't necessarily want to be a voice, if Chris finds out that you have one, he's going to come looking for you. <laughs> for real. Okay. On to the next question. Um, so what resources does LFCC offer students who are looking to transfer? And Marta, we have you down for that one. Um, what they offered, I got to experience two things. One, the live one, which back before COVID that they, um, the school sets up like a transfer fair, which they have all sorts of colleges and universities from within Virginia or even out of state actually. Um, to come and they have the representative, you know, the recruiters, and you talk to them about their call, like you talk to them about their colleges and what degrees that they have and what opportunities they have for you. And there's also the one that I did, which was the virtual transfer, which Chris is involved with. Um, you go on Zoom and he has a list of you in like a chat, like what room you want to go to. And he, he sends you to that room and you talk about colleges there I got to talk about I got to talk to Shepherd University when I did that and um some schools in the Washington areas and George Mason I think I believe I'm not sure um but you get to experience that regardless if it's 
COVID or pre-COVID, you get to experience and they offer those for students. Um, and then they also, um, they offered road, um, transfer school road trips kind of, which they, I know that back when COVID occurred, you would get on like this bus and they'll take you to JMU or to some other university and you got to experience like on the campus thing, you got to learn about, sometimes they'll have specifically degree programs. Like um, I think they had a cyber security program. I think they back in way back when they used to take road trips to JMU and the students got to go there and you know, they experienced whatever. But um, also another thing I would like to talk about is the GAA, which is the um, the, guarantee, the admission, the guarantee that they have with LOCC. And that is basically all the university or colleges that is in Virginia, you have a guarantee of getting in there as long as you are in this specific type of pathway that they have for you. And I know that a friend of mine, she did this for JNU and um, she got in and I'm so happy for her, but LCC does offer that for you. If you're like, oh, I don't know if my transfer is going to pass because when you do it by yourself and you look at what they have listed, it's kind of intimidating. But with LCC, they have this um, guarantee admission for you that you just have to kind of follow these steps and you are guaranteed to get in if you do it correctly. Yeah, so to add on to that, um, I put the the website in the chat. It's lfcc.edu slash transfer. Um, we do have guaranteed admission agreements with all of the public universities, some of the private ones and some of the surrounding states. And what you do is you print that thing out and you start, as soon as you know where you wanna transfer, you start making sure that you are checking off all the boxes on that guaranteed admission agreement. You're working with your advisor and you're also working with the advisor at the other institution. So that way you know that you're on track and you if you check all the boxes on the guaranteed admission agreement, it is exactly what it says. You automatically roll over into being a JMU student or GMU. Um, so make sure that you're kind of checking those out and seeing what they're all about. It makes the transfer process a lot easier for you. Um, and it's better to find out now <laughs> than to wait until you're getting ready, ready to graduate. Um, because I've seen that happen too, where students are like, oh, I was supposed to have this GPA or I was supposed to have these classes. So make sure that you're working with your advisor through those um, and take advantage of them because that's a really awesome um, advantage that you have going to the community college first. Okay, on to the next question. Uh, how do you overcome obstacles and find balance in your work, school, and personal lives? Uh, we did have Wanya down for this, but I'm going to ask Jeff to answer that question for us in his place. Yeah, I can do that. I don't mind filling in for Wanya. Wanya does a lot of stuff for the school and is very active. Um, again, you know, like I say, once Chris finds out that we're willing to do these types of panels. He calls on us. I, I know Marta and I have worked on several together now. And so, so yeah, I don't have a problem covering for Wanya today. So overcoming obstacles, you know, everybody's going to have their kind of their own system and, and it'll kind of depend on, you know, how, how big your obstacles are and, and who you have in your support network, your parents, your friends, your, your peers, um, your advisors, your professors, and 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 so um, and there's so many ways. You know, uh, I say all the time. You know, I go to school like it's my job, and I want to raise. And and for me, that's that's how I overcome my obstacles. I just dig deep and and try to do a, a better job. Um, you know, and the flip side of that is I also had to kind of let myself go last year that. It was okay that I didn't have a 4.0 GPA because school was hard while we were doing it in this virtual way. And, and sometimes that's the way that you overcome is that you, you, you allow yourself to do the best job that you can do and be okay with that. So. That's great advice. Marta. I just would like to advise that if you're struggling at like a mental health 
form, like if you're stressed about your class, you're, if you have anxiety of a specific task or your grade, I mean, don't be afraid to reach out. Reach out to your teacher, reach out to your advisor, reach out to a friend, to a student, because it's kind of what I learned back in fall when I was taking seven classes, it was very stressful. The heavy workload that they had on you, you aren't really prepared because you know it's online. Um, it's it's gonna get you and your mental your mental health is gonna deteriorate at some point from it. But I want you to just to check yourself when you do that. And I loved it when Chris went into the whole mental health of talk, getting a, um, an organization to talk to us about it. I when once you get into that, you learn about certain steps to kind of heal yourself in your own manner and your own length of time, you are just going to become a better person and you are just going to, I don't know, you're going to be able to reach out to people more and notice these things too when yourself, when you start to see yourself deteriorating on certain things. Because for me, it was specifically for school because it's stressful and it's not to intimidate you, but college is different from high school or from another type of institution because it's for you to get your degree and sometimes you stress about your grades like oh I didn't do so well in this test and you take that type of feeling and mentality to your next and you fail that way that's why you need to just step back and just be like okay what can I do or who can I reach out to to help me improve myself and get better at the right track and I know that LOCC when I did that, I reach out to my professor be like, hey, I'm not doing so well mentally. Like, could you postpone some of these tests or can I take these tests at a later time? And usually your professor is very understanding of, of you because they're gonna notice, oh, I did notice that you fill these two tests and you're not doing so well. And I noticed that you have been a good student based on beginning. So yes, I will help you. They're gonna send you to someone who will help you in your mental health. And I know that LCC, they have a we care system where they have someone who will listen to you and your problems and they'll put you in the right track after that. But for that, I do advise you that, you know, make sure that you your life is separated from your college life because if you try to kind of like make them smash against each other, it will not work out. You need to find balance such as with work because if you take so many overtimes and whatever and you kind of put your education on hold, it's going to Humble, I guarantee you because a friend did that too and I reached out to her and I said hey you're taking too many time off and I noticed your grades is not going so well and you're not doing so well and I and I caught her on that she noticed yes and she reached out to the right people and, and you know and she got her like her her whole education and her work life and her personal life back in order but you know people don't really notice until you kind of at the end of the tunnel where you're kind of like, oh, how did I get here when you have so many opportunities to, to have caught yourself from reaching at that point? For me, it was about the mental health, but I appreciate that what LCC had offered for that, so yeah. Marta, I think that is absolutely critical. Thank you for sharing all that, especially your personal experience. I, for me, I, a lot of the things I'm taking at LFCC are way out of my wheelhouse, way out of my comfort zone, some of the math and the science. And you're right. I mean, it did get to me as far as the overwhelming feeling is like, I'm going to just, just like, forget it. I'm just going to fail. I can't take it anymore. And all it took was reaching out. to a professor being like, I just feel overwhelmed and I know I can do this, but I just feel so out of control or out of depth or whatever. Again, so compassionate, so supportive. I kind of feel emotional talking about it just because I can remember that feeling of feeling so just totally overwhelmed because it wasn't my only class. It, it, it I don't, thank you for sharing that. I, well, I had a similar that? experience and I well, just really felt supported by my professors. So that's my experience. Thank you. <laughs> Right, right. And, and this circles us back around to we are our own best advocates. And, and when you don't feel your best you, say so, you know, reach out to someone and, and you know, your advisor, your professors, your, your friends, your parents, your, and, and, and let them know that you're not at your best. And, and there are people to help us get back to being our best us. 
yes, because that's our first priority is making sure that you're okay. I mean, I know that there's a lot of shame that comes from missing assignments or not doing well on something or whatever, but we care about you as people first and the assignments and things like that secondary. So we wanna make sure that you're doing okay. And we want you to know that because uh, you know times, times are weird right now. <laughs> um, that's the best word I can use because they're weird and we're all experiencing this collective thing at the same time. And so that's a lot of pressure on top of trying to go to school and do those things. So we do help you and you know we, we have our services you know virtual now. We have them in person, you know, whatever you need, please speak up. And meeting with your advisor is a great way to do that. They are assigned to you. They are your first person you really meet. Um, so please, if that is the most comfortable, reach out to them first. Okay, so the next um, question kind of really gets at what you all just talked about. Um, and I know that we're running past seven o'clock. So if anybody has to leave, just know that we are recording this. Um, and you can view the rest of it later if you have to go. We hope you stick around. Um, you stay with us this, this long. So the question is, share time when you faced a challenge and how did you find motivation? We'll start with Jeff, please. So again, I, I am an adult returning student and, and part of the reason that I decided to go back to school was that I needed to have my shoulder replaced and and then COVID came along. And so that was postponed for quite some time. And I was already deep in school by the time that I finally came to that. And, and at the beginning of this spring semester, four days before the semester started, I had my shoulder replaced. And my first day of virtual classes, I was under the influence of a lot of painkiller and, and things were pretty foggy. And so, uh, but I, again, I advocated for myself before the semester started, before I had my surgery, I reached out to my professors to let them know that for the first couple of weeks that, that I was going to be struggling against my physical problems. And, and I also reached out to Vivi, um, who helps us all with our accommodation. And Vivi hooked me up with a program so that I could talk to my computer and it would type my homework which uh, in an online, you know, thing, every, well, you know, and, you know, even to, to speak in my classes, you know, a lot of it had to be done that way. And, and so um, the motivation, I think, really was that I was halfway in and, and that I couldn't, I couldn't really backtrack. Um, some of the, because my program is small, some of the classes are only offered in the spring and they're only offered in the fall. And had I stepped away, and I, it would have taken me two more years to finish school. So, you know, sometimes you got to just keep your nose to the grindstone and keep going. And Marta, um, for me, I had a technical issue um, at fall semester again. Um, it was my darkest time. <laughs> I had, my laptop had broken. It like shut down, went full blank. It gave you that blue screen of death where it's dead for sure. And I had my paper on there that was 20 pages, one, 20 pages long. And it was a research about a microbe. And for me, I could not have rewrite that back. And I did not have to save it to a, heart, to a little um, flash drive because well, when you're in a rush, you're kind of like, oh, it's gonna be okay because it's your laptop. But no, for me, that was a challenge because it was due Monday and I only had two days to rewrite the whole 20 page, which I had done during the previous months, just doing it step by step. And when that happened, I had contacted my teacher who said, unfortunately, I can extend the date for you because that's the date that she had to turn in the grade. And so she said, I suggest that you get to the library and, you know, borrow one. And that's where the librarians helped me who were like, yeah, we could help you. Here's the, here's the laptop for you and whatever you need, just contact us. If you need a research paper, like a document, just come to us. We will help you out. And that's when um, I know that I rewrote the whole 20 page by Monday morning and I got my grade and I did really well with it. 
Um, but overall, that you are going to face challenges that you don't expect, even if it's physical, like Jeff, who had his shoulder, or like a technical issue like I had. But just to know that you have to kind of persevere, because with this, you're going to learn kind of a life lesson to, hey, stuff happens, but you have to keep trucking, you know? And you have to just have to put on your big girl pants or big boy pants and be like, okay, what do I need to do to actually fix this problem? And you have to go step by step with what you need and then just complete it on time. And regardless what, if you finish or didn't finish, your teachers know that you had an issue. And sometimes they will be kind of lenient on their grading for you due to that. Not all the time, but most likely because it's a technical issue. It's not your fault that your screen became blue and, you know, but, you know, just persevere in college. It's so, I know it's like, you don't know the experience of it yet, but it will come at you. And it's going to hit you hard at certain points where tests are not going to come out as what you thought or like quizzes, pop quizzes or your papers of 20 to 12, depending on what your teacher is asking. Just persevere and just make sure that you have the right resource or the right person that you need to constantly be like, hey, I'm not doing so well or I need help with this. LCC does offer that for you. And they have plenty of things to offer like the library or the resources or whatever you know they they got your back even though you're struggling okay and the last question that we have for this evening um, and if you do have questions please go ahead and submit them either in the chat or uh, directly to Chris Lambert in the chat and we will try to get those answered as quickly as we can we don't want to take up everybody's evening um, but the last question is, if you were to give yourself a piece of advice before coming in, what would that be? So I'm going to let Jeff, since you're in my top left corner, you get to go first. All right. Well, I, ordinarily, because I'm old school, I would have gone ladies first. But since I'm on the spot, I'm on the spot. So um, I think my biggest piece of advice for everybody coming in and for myself would be to establish a network, you know, Make sure that you that you know who your advisor is. You've met with your professors. That you that you you reach out to your peers. You know, study groups and and being able to you know like one of the, th the things that took me the longest to establish was that I could I could inbox through Canvas my fellow students and I could say hey 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 where are we at on this you know what do you know what you know, I'm stuck or, or, or you stuck or, you know, and so, so establishing that network that, that, that turns into your safety net and turns into a trampoline that you can, you can propel yourself from. I think that would be my biggest piece of advice. Okay. And Mary. My biggest piece of advice is get involved. Don't let those emails on Monday go by without giving them a good read. There's going to be something there that is going to appeal to you. There's something there that I've done some of these meetings with my kids in the room because y'all know life and that's how it is. And with them being home during COVID and school and all those things, they have sat in the room where I am on a couch getting involved is just a matter of saying yes. So say yes, get involved, show up for something, have a laugh, meet some new friends. I cannot tell you what a great experience it's been for me. I really, it's part of the reason again, that I want to be a student ambassador, that I want to be involved because I said yes. And it's just been really rewarding and really has enriched my time at LFCC. And Martha, bring it on home. <laughs> Jeff and Mary literally took everything again. Um, for me, if it involves school, like specifically, if you're specifically going to any of the STEM programs, form a study group of your classmates of that program specifically, because you would think the body would be easy to understand. It is not. There is lots of things that are going involved, especially if you're going into the medical field or anything of the STEM program you need to have a study group because those are the people that you're going to find out that oh they're great at this subject but you're terrible at it they're going to teach you how to learn it 
in the most basic and easy method ever. And also to get involved, like Mary says, for me, I did not get involved so much during my first semester. And every problem that I had, I basically went to my professor who happened to be my advisor at that time to show me who to go, where to go and whatever. But she noticed that I was really into trying to get out of my shell of being an introvert. And she said, why don't you join SGA, you know? And from there, from SGA, I went, it opened a lot of doors for me through making connections with people, um, being a leader and just honing that skill of being a better person and just making a better resume out of it actually. But overall, just to get involved with the school, there are a lot of things. If you ever need help, don't shy away and ask someone, even if it's your professor, they're gonna be like, I don't know if there is, but they're gonna go and say to this other person who said like, yeah, there is, you know, they're gonna give you an email be like yeah this is what you need or this will help you to go along your way but yeah overall just to if it's if you're like only going to school for solely academic just yeah get into a study group because they are the ones that are probably they're the same in the same boat as you and they will most likely be your first and only pe couple of people that's going to push you like you did great you did so well in this test and it's gonna hype you up to do better at school awesome thank you all so much for talking to everybody tonight. Chris, do you have any questions that have come in? No questions. That means you guys covered everything very thoroughly. <laughs> well, if you do think of any questions along the way or you need to reach out to somebody to um, ask any kind of question, you know, Chris sends that weekly email from the Engage at LFCC. You can respond to that. Um, and he will find the answer for you. Talk to your advisor, talk to your professors. Um, we are all here for you to help you be as successful as possible. And we love keeping in touch with our students afterward because we like to see where you end up. Well, and, and I know I probably speak for Mary and Marta as well. If, if you see us on campus and you need to know something, ask, you know, we're, we, we'll help. So hopefully we'll see those of you that are on the call um, at our welcome day events that we have this week. If you are, if you haven't signed up, go to lfcc.edu slash welcome day. Um, and I believe you can still sign up for those. We're gonna be having a gear up session. We're gonna give you bags of goodies um, and then a campus tour. You can get your parking pass and your student ID. Um, Yes, yeah, so the signups are open until midnight tonight. So you got a few hours to make sure that you're signed up for for those. But you'll see me on campus. You'll see most of the panelists on campus um, to help you that day. And we can't wait to start this semester. So welcome to LFCC. Um, and if you don't have any questions, you are free to log off, except for the panelists. We want to see you after everybody's logged off. So you all can't go yet.